Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, oh, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Holy shitballs in heaven. I am hungover. You're gay. Here we are. I was in a different country today. Really? Canada. Oh, Canada. Uh, the My. Great White Way. Is that what it is? The Great Northwest? Great Tundra? Great White Way? Great no, Gatsby. White Way is not it. White Way. What is the White Way? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I think we're doing things the White Way. Uh, <laughs> um, the Great North. I think something great north. north. Do North. Great White North. The Great White North. That ah, sounds like something. There it is. Boy, that sounds bad. The Great White North. Can't have that anymore. Well, it's very white. Canada. Sure. Uh-huh. I don't know. I love Canada. I'll be there in I May. Do. Uh May 29th, I think. Ooh. Something like that. A similar thing. I think it's the same festival. What's he yeah. doing? This festival every three weeks it's or something? A, it's a kooky thing. The Dark Comedy Fest. That Rob May, who's a good egg. He just, you know, he had Tim Dillon. He has Shane Gillis. All the people you're not allowed to have. Well, I'm doing it in May, I think. And it's Louis J. Gomez, Ooh. Zach Amico. I believe Sarah's going to be involved. There you go. So it's it's couples comedy. Yeah. <laughs> that was actually his joke via text, and now I just did it. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, I figured I'd get the laugh and then reveal that that was his. Right. But, uh, um, well, welcome back. Hey, buddy. good to be back. Same time zone, right? Same time zone, but that customs. God, they kill you. Ah, fuck customs. It's all George W. Bush's fault. Ah. Uh-huh. That's what I read somewhere. That passport. I'll get into it, but I got a whole backstory with this this tale. But uh, so much to... I want to go in chronology here, because I don't want to get too too off. Well, I haven't seen you since the 70s. We've both yeah. been in different countries. I was out to sea. Oh, you were right. uh, gay for a week. And what what cities did you hit, or what, where'd you go? We just went to Nassau. It's so silly. Ah. These cruises are very silly, because... You're literally, like, cruising. Right. Someone told me you can get from Miami to Nassau on, this is from Chris D. Stefano, uh-huh. who is a little thick, but also smart. He's weird. Yeah. He's one of those guys, huge cock, nice body, very sexy, Great seems face. dumb, but is also really smart. Well, he's a personal trainer. What do you call it? Physical ther? Yeah, he was a physical therapist, but I got to tell you, one time, early on in my uh, relationship with old uh, Thick Dick, Yep. Uh, Steve Forrest, remember him? Steve Forrest. Comic from Carolina. He moved back. Oh, yeah. Booze bag. I think he got married, drank it up. Yeah, he lived yeah. with Sarah. He was like ah. roommates. I, we used to have to fuck quietly. Isn't it weird? Sarah and I, this guy would hear Sarah and I fuck. Yeah. And now I never see him again. That's fun. Isn't that weird? So, there's, a, there's a guy living his life out there that yeah. has heard me come. He can just think about that all anytime he wants. Me too. It's Hashtag. not great. <laughs> Um, but well, that's kind of fun. It's not like you're raping. You're you're banging your girl. No, it always feels bad that the roommate situation. Like in a couple of weeks, me and Sarah and I, and then Derek and his wife are going out on a little couples retreat, a little wow. vacation. I'm, I'm hoping to swap it up. You never yeah, know. Yeah, why not? A little tradesies. But we were gonna uh, and <laughs> cash considerations. Trader Joe, a player to be named later. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> but we were gonna get. A house. Sarah wants to get a house. I booked a hotel. Sarah's like, let's get a house because we're going to like mm. Palm Springs. They have those houses with the glass and the That's slanty fun. things. Sure. Maids. Yes. Um, Asian. But so she wants to get a house. But I'm like, we can't get a house because what happens if they have kids? They're excited to get away. What if you get a house with thin walls? And ah, now we can't fuck properly. Good point. You got to go hotel. And you got a kid running around. That's going to hurt the boner. I, I go hotel. Well, they're not bringing the kid. Oh. Kids help my boners, but they're not bringing uh-huh. them, unfortunately. But we'll put up posters. <laughs> yeah. um, milk cartons. Wow. Whoa. That was something. Oh, man. That was a real moment. Yeah, we're in sync. I think I got a pube in my tongue. Speaking of that, Joey Fatone was at the oh, uh, yeah. thing. Isn't it crazy that his name is spelt Fat One? Oh, my God. Joey Fat One? I never put it together. And he's the fat one. Yeah, it's like the rapist. It would be like if the gay one's name was Gay One. Right, right, or uh, Homo. Yeah, Homo uh, Sapiens. <laughs> homo Erectus. Homo Vaughn. <laughs> <laughs> that was the weed. What are you, smoking Ooh. butts? Oh, I smoked some weed. I'm all, I'm all over the road here. Reflux. I'm hurting. 
Uh, it seems weird to smoke weed at this point because of all the things that the, the, vape, the, the, the chewables edibles, and the business the gummies. Yeah, to just smoke a straight thing <coughs> seems dumb. I'll tell you though, Toronto weed is legal, Canada, and it's just you're Canada out is. there. It's in a big theater and it just puffs of smoke. It looks kind of cool. Really? It's like the 40s again. I feel like uh, Sinatra. Everybody's all it's just smoking clouds out there. You can smoke weed right in the building? Right in the in theater. In Toronto? That's in, so surprising. In Toronto. Because it's such a gay, progressive city, I feel well, like. Well, gays love the weed. Well, I mean, like, uh, you know, everybody be nice cities. Aha. Uh-huh. Well, weed is nice. I'm saying, like, uh, you know what I mean. Lots of rules, oh, no smoking, no I fast see. food, that I kind see. of thing. I got you. You know what I mean? It doesn't, it doesn't feel like a hard city. Right, right. Like Montreal smoking indoors fits. Aha. Uh-huh. There's strippers and whores and sure. French people. But, that's but the Toronto weird. feels, you know. But you couldn't smoke a cig. It's got to be the dope. What? Really? It's got to be reefer, yeah. Was that just at Comedy Bar? Because I remember them. I remember hearing about that. Lewis was talking about it. It uh, sounds maybe. off-putting to me. Maybe it wasn't bad though. Although you might get a contact anal. I don't mind a contact anal. Sure. I had contact, contact with my anal earlier. Contact lens. Isn't it weird that you wipe your ass? Your fingers are right in there. Oh yeah. I think about that all the time. And toilet paper is so thin. Like your I fingers know. are in your butt. And I always give a. You never know. I, I don't wash my hands. Let's well, be honest. <laughs> no, I've washed my hands about four times. In the <laughs> cruise, they make you. Huh. And it's like they're making fun of themselves. This Asian guy's going washy washy. What? Everywhere you go, because Corona. Oh right, so right. Everywhere you go, they say washy washy, and they spray you right in the fucking tits. Wow. Well, I gotta tell you, just being at the airport, every Asian has got the mask on all day long. That's good because they're ugly people. True. You know, cover that shit up. Yes, dental floss on the eye. Um, That's only classic. kidding, of course. We're joking. Jane Gillis. Yellow. Hey hey. Uh, <laughs> Ronnie Chang, great special. Oh, I love Ronnie. I was with him last night. Oh, good egg. He's a great, great guy. Good guy, funny guy, cool guy. Yes, enjoyable to be around. Uh, but wait, what were we talking about? I don't know. Uh, the Mary Cruise. Jane crew. Time. Oh, oh, the NASA. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, so Chris D told me this that you could go. Someone told him this, so don't get mad at him. I don't want Tuesdays with facts to fucking cut my pussy off. God hates facts. But he said. You can go from Miami to Nassau in like 29 minutes wow. on the boat. Or maybe it was 39 minutes. Miami to Nassau. Because Nassau's not that far. On those cruise ships, you can just fucking lay it down sure. and just go oh, yeah. and fly over. But they basically most of the cruise is just dilly-dallying around, just farting, pussyfooting. Yeah. Yes. Pussyfooting. Oh. I'll tell you, when I did that cruise, I remember just looking out and it's just vast ocean. You're like, damn, we are out there. Yeah, it's pretty nice. It's it was terrifying, that, that porthole. Yeah, well, that the the nighttime thing because if it fell in the day, you also, of course you have the fantasy. You watch all these documentaries. I have the fantasy of watching someone go, ah, and I'm the guy that's like, man, I'm a man. oh yeah, man, I'm a man. totally I'm calling and banging up the thing. Yeah. And then there's an interview, and it's just me talking just off camera, being like, I saw the feet, and I yelled, man, overboard. Right. And then they're like, you know, who's your mother and whatever. Yeah, isn't that weird? You look over. It's like when you're on top of a building. You're like, ah, I could just jump. You get that weird rush, like, what if I just do it? I had that the whole time. Not only that, it's not just the thing of, like, because sometimes you have the thing, what if I said the N-word at a funeral? Sure. What if I came on my mother's tits while she's oh, sleeping? Yeah. Um, some of those have been answered. She was yeah. fine with it. Yeah, nice um, lady. Open-minded. But it's not just, just that thing. When you're on the uh, cruise ship on the balcony... Everything in me wants to jump off because I love jumping off high places right, into the ocean. Right. So it's not just the thing of like, oh, what if I did the thing you're not supposed to do? It's yeah. like I actually am hot and in the sun yeah. and want to swim in there. Right. And so I kept having that thing. Plus, I'm dealing with some stuff. So I'm just like, God, I want to get in there. And during the day, you're like, someone would see me. They'd throw me a line. Yeah. I'd have to float for a minute. Sure. And then they'd just reel me right in. That's true. But at nighttime. Oh, you're a goner. If nobody sees it. That's you can it. Really, I love the idea that all these guys have tried to kill their wives on those things. Yeah, that's right. And then they're like, she had on heels and she tripped. <laughs> it's like, come on, dude, you did it. Oh, yeah. What was it Robert Wagner? Isn't that the guy who killed his wife or Natalie Wood? I think that's the two people, yeah. Oh, wow. Wagner and Wood. And I think they fuck with that in the uh, Once Upon a Time in Anal. Oh, is there a, they elude? Elude. Hmm, that's yes. a fun word. Quaalude. Not illusions, illusions. That was from Cuckoo's Nest. Ah. <coughs> but, yeah, I think that's why you get so kooky on a cruise, because there's no land. Like, that's why people are fucking and doing drugs and eating horrible food and all this stuff, because you're just 
There's there's no uh it's all topsy turvy. There's no stability. It feels lawless. Lawless You're just out this. Uncharted waters. That's one of the strange things about the cruise. Like there was this fucking I'll I'll jump all over because I got a lot to <laughs> get to, but there was this like crazy drunk lunatic lady dressed as macho man randy savage now i don't uh-huh. know if she goes every year or not mm, not not ringing a bell but she's uh a bit of a heavyweight uh-huh. maybe a maybe a light heavyweight but welter doughy Might i be welter see. got it wood wood and welter www uh-huh. the wwf uh, but she was chunky, and it's, it's just a big alky. Sure. But she was dressed as Macho Man Randy Savage the whole weekend. What? She had the jacket with the tassels all the way down the yeah. arm. There's some photos out there. Yeah. And for some reason, she wore a th- pants, but like a thong underneath that looked like a big bush. Ah. So she kept ripping down her pants and being like, yeah, <laughs> with her bush. And then she had scars and a lot of like real doughy shit things uh, what do you call it the uh, stretch marks yes yeah, stretch yeah, like cottage cheese business that's a bad look and at one point i don't even know where to start with this lady my first time i saw her was at there was a big belly flop contest Ooh, we, i didn't go to that that's i should have it sounded like it was really fun yeah ralphie may but um i saw her afterwards and she was just kind of walking around and her like thong thing was hanging out like her full ass was hanging out stomach tits everywhere yeah and just stumbling sunglasses and the macho man hat and was just like everyone was like look at this fucking nut yikes really off put it's just someone you could tell was troubled yes yes could use a little help wow every day with the macho no hulk hogan no million dollar man ted dbs all savage all the time Ooh, oh yeah uh uh-huh. step into a fat gym and there was no uh she should step into any gym and <laughs> put in a workout but uh no miss elizabeth or anything i could have been elizabeth i'm dainty. elizabeth that was macho man squeeze oh i didn't know he had a squeeze miss elizabeth yeah he oh. carried around on his shoulder him and hogan fought over it was a whole thing i figured he was playing the field i know he had a one-timer <laughs> i'm sure he did both i mean he's the champion of the world That's a good point sexy dude yeah baseball player what yeah he was drafted by some fucking team that explains those shades those are real baseball shades yeah, yeah. the facial hair baseball yeah he and had a good run yeah died though he died oh years ago what yeah i wish it was her belly flop pol polfolo or something like that italian guy Pofolo uh-huh. or something like that and his brother was a wrestler aha uh-huh. he was the genius the genius yep that's not a great wrestler name i don't no. want some guy with test tubes and a bunsen burner i want a you know a bushwhacker Mm. Genius is no good. That doesn't strike fear. I think he read poems, and I think oh. he's more of a manager kind of character guy. I see. I which see. Which must be weird to have your brother be like the greatest wrestler of all time, and then you're like, I'm going to wear a gown and read poems. Yeah. So like, okay, have fun, Steve. I'll be the genius. What's he even a lab coat and a, and a what do you call that thing that the doctors have with the? Uh, it's like a circle. Oh yeah, it's kind of like a symbol. Yeah. What is that? I don't know. I think that was very fifties. Was it a light or what was its function? I think it was a, a reflector. It was it was shiny. It was metallic. Yeah, it was metallic. Mm. What was going on with Metallica. that? Metallica. Hmm. Well, speaking of Metallica, the first the next time I saw her was at Jim Brewer. Oh wow! Now Jim Brewer had a show. There's a theater at on the cruise. Yes. We didn't get to do it. I guess the comics used to do the theater, but now they just had us in some bullshit lounge thing. But uh. whatever. Uh, so we go to see Jim Brewer, and you know me, I'm very skeptical, I'm very cynical, sure. I'm a real garbage asshole. Same here. And everyone's like, well, go see Brewer. I'm like, I don't want to watch a man do comedy. Nah, what am I doing? He's going to be silly. The Velvet Fog. Uh, but I'm like, I guess I'll go. Everyone's going to see Brewer, whatever. And you know the guy, you've heard him. It's it, You've never seen him before. Yeah, so, so I'll go watch him, I guess. And Hamil- me and Hamilton and Sarah go, and Chris D's opening, so I'm like, okay, we'll go. There we go. So I go, we watch uh, Chris D comes out, does his set, and he kills. He's great. He makes Killer. me laugh so hard. Funny guy. He brings out Brewer, and as soon as Brewer comes out, he walks out, and some guy goes, Goat Boy, or whatever, uh, Goat Boy. Uh, you hate to hear that. And so Brewer just trashes him subtly, which was great. He's like, you've been waiting all day to do this. Uh, He's like, you've been practicing <laughs> in the mirror. You just fucked it up, and which is so fun to just belittle. Yes. You pick apart a guy, and, you, and the guy's going, shit, he got me there. Yes. He, he nailed that one. And there's 900 people, and you're like, you're that guy. Yeah. The fucking character is 25 years old. Yep. Just shut up. And he must hate it. Oh, he yeah. He must just fucking hate it. So he takes him apart. Right when he's done taking this guy apart, 
Here comes Randy Savage. Oh. She walks up to the stage. Yeah. And she's got her video camera. She's in a blackout. Uh huh. Stumbling around right up to the front row doing a selfie. And she's like, Yeah, Brewer. Uh. Half Baked is my favorite movie. Uh. Uh. And of course, everyone hates her. And then he was so professional. He walks over and gets down on a knee and he's like, Do you have friends? Where are your friends? (laughs) Oh, wow. And she's like, they're right over there. And he's like, those are not your friends. If they were your friends, you wouldn't be doing this. They would say, why don't you not do that? And then he did this whole thing. And he's like, what do you got? Some stretch marks there? And she's like, they're my scars. I'm a mother. And he's like, you're a mother? He's like, where are your parents? And it's like killing. And obviously, he's doing it better than what I'm doing. Sure. And then she's like, fuck it. And evidently, she got mad, Uh which we'd find out later. I'll tease that. So then he's like, oh. Okay, that, this goes on for about five minutes. Security, there's no security on that boat. No, nah, no secure. Because here's what I realized. Normally, when you're doing shows in comedy, the people are on your territory. Yes. It's the it's our club. Right. You're at the club. I'm running the show. You're disrupting. Get out of here. But on that cruise, we're in the way. Yeah. It's their cruise. Yes. You're on their boat, baby. It, there's 2,000 of them. They're going to see the Impractical Jokers, and we're just some assholes. They don't yeah. know who the fuck we are. No, no. They want Sal and Murr and Q. Q that's and Joe. Joe. Yeah. He's the ugly one. Right. Well, ugly. it's debatable. Mm. That kind of, it's a toss up. But also hilarious, that guy. And oh, a sweet he's guy. A, yeah, super funny guy. I'll take that out in post. He was very nice to me. Uh huh. Bad. I'm an ugly guy myself. But any tits. Uh-huh. So he, nobody's coming over to do anything. And then he goes on and on. After a while, he goes, all right, you can go take a seat now. Why don't you take a seat? Oh, and yeah. then she kind of was like, Burr. and then just went back to her seat. And surprisingly, was fine after that. Now we're eight minutes in. Now he goes into just talking about the cruise. He does about 20 minutes on the cruise. Wow. And is murdering. Man. I'm howling. It was like black comedy jam or whatever the hell that's called. Urban? Deaf. Uh, deaf comedy yes. jam, yeah. I mean, we're all elbowing each other. I got Hamilton in a headlock. I'm wow. blowing to Stefano. Ron Bennington's fucking Bonnie. You know, it's wild up there. <laughs> it's like someone threw a hand grenade in the crowd. He's killing. Wow. See, I feel like that's like some old guard shit. This guy knows how to handle a heckler. He can do 20 minutes riffing on the actual place he's at. It's not just, I go up, I do my act, I leave. This guy's a pro. Oh, yeah. And he's got some notes. He did some old bits, some new bits, and all kinds of stuff. I mean, just killing. We had to leave with like 20 minutes left because we had to go do our own show. Yeah. Which is always disappointing to leave a theater that's like they're crying, laughing. Right. And then we go up to like the lounge. There's 11 people. They're drunk. I know. I know. I wonder I wonder if he's doing okay. You know, like is he doing theaters and getting his due? I think he's doing well enough. I all mean, right. he started a new podcast, which... Ah. Thank God for podcasts. I know. You got to have one. He could just go, I'm going to start a podcast, make 75 grand a year or whatever. Exactly. Like, that's not what we're, been, we're making. We're mm. making. We're not Jim Brewer. We're making much more. But um, then I went to the live. He does a live podcast with Keith. He started a new podcast. We go to that. Like, let's go check that out. Keith, Keith Robinson. Robinson. And boy, that was amazing. When this comes out, go listen to it. Keith Robinson on the Jim Brewer podcast. I want to hear that. Great listen. Some of it might be edited out. Oh. So they got it pretty spicy, but. Too hot to handle. Too cold to hold. Uh Uh-huh. Call the Ghostbusters and you're in control. But that was amazing. And then Randy Savage makes one more appearance for us. Jesus. Our show next night, last night. She shows up, sits front row for our final show, uh-huh. and uh, Bonnie McFarlane goes on first, and the woman's like, yeah, are you going to be nice to me? Jim Brewer is mean. Fuck Jim Brewer. And you're like, oh, you think he's the bad guy. Right. And Man, then, this gal got some issues. Oh, she's fucked. Well, that's what I was going to say about the cruise. Normally in shows, the heckler leaves. You're like, well, I'll never see that guy again. Right. And you forget in the boat, you're so isolated. You're like, oh, they're still here somewhere. It's like a small town. Yeah, they're on the boat. So she goes there, and then Bonnie's like, what do you got, fat? You're all fat. You should get some clothes that fit you. And the woman's like, oh, body shaming. Oh, you're so edgy. Body shaming. We're not doing that anymore. And Bonnie goes, I'm still doing it. Ah. And that killed. We all went crazy. It was so fucking funny. This gal needs to be pushed overboard. She's got got to get beached. Leave her on the island. She sucks. Well, she's got problems. I have some empathy for her. She's obviously popping pills and boozing and she should, you know, stretch marks. Get it together. I wanted to. I went up next, by the way. She's like, Are you going to be mean? And I said, uh, Well, I just want to say. 
I'm not a fan. And that <laughs> got a big laugh. And then she kind of put her head down. I just went through my set. Yeah. And the whole time, she just kind of was like sitting like this with her head down, like she missed the game winner. Right. And uh, got to put her in the poop deck or something. This gal's a, a menace. It was bad. A menace to society. Um, Nacho man. Yeah. She stunk. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's the Macho Man. I got some more cruise stuff, but I, I gotta I gotta kick it back over because oh. these people they'll write mean shit to me. If I, I want to hear talking. about the cruise. There's nothing better than a, a practical joker's cruise. I'll just say a quick one. So I did Gotham Comedy Club. You know, you headline that. Always exciting in the city. Fun times. We sold her out. So this guy hits me up on the DMs. I answer all my DMs because I'm uh, lonely, and he goes, "Hey man, I want to propose to my lady." Can I do it at your show? I'm a big fan. I'm a Tuesday, the whole thing. Oh, wow. And I was like, eh, it's a little kitschy. You mm. know, it's a little uh, gimmicky. And I said, how about this, Fatty? I'll let you do it after my set. Okay. And he was like, all right, you know, win-win. You don't, you don't going to fuck my set up. You also get to do your proposal. You ruin your life. <laughs> it's you a know. lot of pressure, though. It's a lot of pressure. What but if you he, eat it? He wanted to do it. I know, but what if you have a Randy Savage or a heckler? And yeah, well, he yikes. seemed like a good egg. I was getting a good vibe because he kept, he kept, it's all about intent because you could tell he was like, I'm sorry, I hate to do this, but it would mean a lot to me. Like he was, he was throwing it out there. It wasn't just like, hey, fag, let me put on the dip. Oh, dip sure, bit. sure. I'm just worried that you're going to have a bad set and oh. then it's this weird <laughs> thing. Well, it was a, the set went fine, but I realized we didn't set anything up. Oh, no. Like I just winged it. And uh, so I do my set, and I go, thank you, thank you, all right. And then I, I was like, how do I get this guy up here? I don't want to just go, hey, you're going to propose? Right. Get on up here. That'll ruin it. So I go, thanks a lot, and I just stand up there, and I go, hey, what's your fucking problem? Now the audience, the, the applause has died. And I go, what's Ooh. your fucking problem? And the audience is like, what? The show's over? Now what are you yelling at the guy? Interesting. And he goes, uh, huh? And I go, you haven't laughed once, not once, the whole hour. And he goes, yeah, yeah, I wasn't into it. And he just rolls with it. Wow, and he yes like, ended. I was like, well, how about you get up here, and I do the classic, get your fat ass up here, and you do some comedy. He goes, gladly. No, So shit. he gets up there. I hand him the mic. I sit off to the side, and the crowd is like, oh, shit, this is getting crazy. It was like a world star. And uh, he's like, yeah, Tiffany or whatever, Sarah Clancy, whatever her name was. Clancy. I, uh, <laughs> I've i always wanted to do this or whatever. I have a question for you. And just say what you will about marriage and jaded and how far we've gotten and, and antiquated and we're all disconnected. The whole place gasped. It was beautiful. They love it. People love, love a it. proposal. They fucking love it. I don't care what 2020, we're not connected anymore. We're all on our phones. This was old school. And he goes out in the crowd, gets down on one knee. The place is going ape shit. Because they didn't think it was, they didn't see this coming. Wow. They thought he was going to try to do stand up. And uh, holy hell, the place went wild. And uh, he was like, thanks a lot, Mark. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And I came back. Oh, I was give it up for the bride to be. Holy hell. Thought she was going to say no. That could have been a nice twist. That would have been fun. But uh, she said yes. They kissed. The place is going crazy. And then we had a second show, which was not as good. Oh, that's weird to have to go <laughs> do another show. <laughs> yeah, but it was a nice moment. And uh, good, good for you guys. Yeah, have fun out there. And the key is communication. There's always a guy that gets married two years right. later. He's like, here's what's up. Yeah, yeah. So they'll they'll get divorced eventually. But it was a nice moment, and it was a beautiful thing. And I put it on my uh, Insta if you want to take a look. Uh, but the crowd had no idea. And thank God it all worked because I, I was just winging that. Yeah, that sucks to fuck that up. But it sounds like you nailed it. It went well. It went well. Here's the thing about proposals. Whatever happens, it's become special because it's a proposal. Right. So even if you put it in dog shit and throw it in her hair, it's still all right. Here, here. Exactly. That's what I did. So uh, now I'm riding high. Next day I have lunch with my old pal Matt Salacuse. Hey, Sally. And uh, we go get lunch at the TikTok Diner on 8th and 34th. Oh, wow. I'm feeling good. I go to Penn Station to get the uh, one train back to the house. I go, ah, you know, I've been having a good run. I jump the turnstile. Oh, as boy. As you do. Mm-hmm. Oop, 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 oop. Hey, Chachi, come on over here. And I go, oh, what's this guy? Plain clothes. A plain clothed cop? That's how they get you. Gee, and I go, can I help you? And he's like, and I was a real douche. I had sunglasses on and a jacket. It was a real bad move. Yep. And he goes, yeah, yeah, I'm a cop. He shows me the badge. And I go, oh. And he puts me up against the wall, and I'm I'm hand on the wall. Wow! So now it's Penn Station, so it's 
popping. Oh, baby. that's fun. Did he kick your legs apart no, at all? No, no kick because yeah. I, 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 uh, I went with it. What do you call it? I didn't resist. Oh, you uh, complied. There it is. You got to comply. Yes. So, uh, you know, he's like, what do you do? I'm like, I'm a comedian. He goes, oh, let's hear it. I had to tell him the joke. It was right out of a movie. Oh, my God. What joke? I couldn't think of a good one, so I did the joke where I say, uh, oh, this is so bad. I wish I hadn't done it, but I go, you know, I'm black. That one, that's a classic. Oh, wow. You did your own joke. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, I would have busted out, how many skunks does it take to stink up a room? A few. Ooh. Yeah. That's my go-to. How about this one? I heard this one the other day. Uh-oh. Uh, uh my girlfriend accused me of being a pedophile, and I said, "Geez, that's a big word for a six-year-old." Oh, that's, that's fun. fun. That's fun. That's good. That the other day, that's nice. So here's the clinker, though. I'm up against the wall at Penn Station. They're doing the ticket, filling it out. All right, how old are you? What? Uh, let me see your ID. I see four kids jump the turnstiles. Oh, come on! And I'm like that, but I don't want to rat them out. Right. But you know, they're a fun, loving African American, and one kid gets caught, and they bring him over. So now me and this kid are hanging out. He's got oh, a big fro. And uh, they let him go. And I go, what What the hell? Why you let him go? And not me. They go, ah, he's 15. It's like, what the fuck? Oh, jeez. What, now, what did is he, that? Did he frisk you up when you, against the wall and nah, shit? I think he could tell I was uh, upstanding or whatever. Uh, okay. But uh, no no stop and frisk. Those Bloomberg days are over, I guess. Five million. Is that right? <laughs> That's the number I saw on the TV. I was laughing so hard. They had like his campaign guy. And he was like, "Ah, oh, we did a couple hundred thousand. And the guy, the anchor was like, it was five million. Five and the guy's million? like, well, I don't know anything about that. Wait, he frisked five million? Uh, I guess. I, don't, I mean, he didn't do that it personally. Seems high, he though. seems like he'd be into it. It seems like a lot. I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, I guess there's nine mil in the city. I just love when people uh, people are trying to. That's why I love about politics. The guy's like, it was a couple hundred thousand. He's yeah. like, I got it right here in front of me. It's five million. The guy's like, well, the point is the uh, crime went down. Right, right. But anyways. Yeah, so uh, I got the ticket. I put it on Instagram. I got to pay it 100 clams. Wow. That's no uh, spring chicken, but I figure I've jumped it for years. I, I, it's worth it. Yeah. That, well, it all even. It's like Canner has a joke about you get a drink, a ticket for drinking publicly. Ah. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, a beer is $8. He does the whole math. He's a sure. Jew. Yeah, yeah. But uh, somehow it works out. It's a funny bit. But if you've only gotten caught once, you're still in the black uh, in or the, the black. red or the blue or the brown. Uh, yeah, I'm in the, the person of color. Black is good. Red is bad. Well, depends on the people. But, uh, yeah, so that was uh, very eye-opening. When you get that ticket, you're like, when you're up against that wall and the guy's got the badge going, you're like, man, I'm a criminal. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. It was exciting, yeah. You got to pay that off because that's one of those ones they find you later and they go, hey, you got an unpaid ticket, blah, yeah, blah, blah. Yeah, you don't have a, a prior, Richard Pryor. Yeah. So, Come yeah, on. that was me. So then I, uh, you know, I got the ticket. I put it on Instagram. I'm going to pay it. I'm going to pay it today. I swear to God. Pay it today. Yeah, Why pay not? it forward. So flew out to uh, St. Louis the next day. How about this? Thursday to Saturday in St. Louis. Sunday, I'm going to Toronto. Now I'll jump in here, and then you 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 finish us off. Okay. I think I'm out of it after this. Okay, I got a bunch of weird things. All right. So, go out to St. Lou, Helium, fun town. Bit of a bummer over there. Not a great city. Mm-hmm. You know, they got the arch and uh, some weird pizza and ravioli and AIDS and crack and fentanyl. Yeah, a couple things. Not much Not happening much. there. Yeah. Cardinals are fine. Whatever. Good alumni though. Oh, there's some people, some musicians, I right? I think they got Miles Day. Chuck Berry, maybe. Chuck Berry. Is a thing. Yeah. I think Cedric the uh, Entertain. Yeah. A lot of fun blacks. Brian Cox, the football guy. Ah, not the actor. Jonagan? Jonagan, yeah, he lays claim. He's uh-huh. Southern Illinois, but St. Louis is okay. his city. Started there. Nikki Glazer. Uh-huh. Um, Greg Warren. Greg Warren is kind of a St. Louis guy. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, fun time. Definitely a St. Louis guy. I uh, had a ton of barbecue. I really shit the bed. I've been sh- miscarrying all week with that barbecue. Careful. But uh, flight was delayed to St. Louis. <laughs> we had the pussiest pilot on the planet. For some reason, the pilot came out. He's like, "It's gonna be some snow. It's gonna call. Co- it's gonna take a lot of gas to get to St. Louis. So we're gonna stop in Pittsburgh to refuel." What? And we're like, "What? It's a three-hour flight." And he's like, "Ah." That bumpiness, you know, we're going to have to push through oh. the snow. It's going to take more gas. We're like, all right. Oh, he sounds like Bloomberg. This guy stunk. <laughs> so we're like, what the fuck? But, you know, what am I going to argue with the pilot? I don't know what the hell is going on. So uh, he's got wings. So 
We uh, we stop in Pittsburgh, and it's not like you just stop and refuel. You got to stop, taxi, get paperwork, refuel. Then he goes, you know what? We're gonna de-ice. Oh. We're gonna put some de-ice on this uh, bitch right here. And uh, you're like, what de-ice? What are we doing? Smooth ride the whole way. No ice, no turbulence, no snow. The de-ice. I've never had a quick de-ice in my life, by no, the way. No de-ice. Hours. It takes longer to de-ice than it does to freeze ice. Ah. Uh-huh. You put a cube tray in the cube, yes. the fucking thing. It's ready in a half hour. You get that it's not quite ready, but it's split. You ever have the ice cube right. and you put your finger through it? That's kind of fun. fun. I yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah, but the de-ice horse shit. Get out of here. Get out of here. Ice, ice, baby. I hated this guy. We finally get to St. Louis. I was supposed to get there at 3. I got there at like 7. The show's oh, at 8. You know, God. you got to go right to the hotel, rub one out, fuck your asshole, then go to the show. I can't not jerk off upon arrival. No. It's that, what do you call it? The Murphy's Law, the Pavlov's Dog, whatever the fuck thing is. Oh, uh, yeah. There's something about checking in. I got to beat one off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just I, do it at the airport, right, when I get there. In the airport? Yeah, fuck the hotel. Well, that'll de-ice. Oh, yeah. Well, it's a little frosting. <laughs> Isis. Uh, so, yeah, finally got there. Barely made it. Uh, now I'm in St. Louis. We're having fun. Me and Sean Murphy, he's the feature. And, you know, we're doing the things during the day. We're doing this. We're doing that. Shows are great. Sell some shirts. Brought too many, as usual. And I'm laying in bed, hungover, on Saturday, and I go... Uh, yeah, I gotta go to Toronto tomorrow. I guess I'll check in. You know, it's like noon. Check it in. Okay. Birth date, age, passport number. Huh. Passport number. <laughs> oh, I didn't bring my fucking passport. Oh. You piece of shit, cum guzzling Nazi. I uh, blew it. I know what happened. I did the same thing. Talk Back to me, in 2014, sister. I had to go to Winnipeg, but first I did a week in Schaumburg. That's what it is. So your initial flight is domestic. Exactly. So you're not thinking next flight. Exactly. It gets you every time. Every time. Every fatty. time, because you look at the thing and you go, "I'm flying to St. Louis yeah. with old fucking pussyfoot the Ice Man." Exactly. And Queef. you're dangerous, and you don't bring the passport. Then you nope. get there. Now it's time to go to Toronto. I've done it myself. All right, now common mistake. I feel better because I. I it's so embarrassing. And you text your manager, you text your agent, like, what the fuck? You're scrambling. And then you're like, all right, maybe the girl can overnight it. Maybe that's something. And you're like, well, where, where are you going to overnight it to? I'm leaving tomorrow. You know, like, how's that going to work? So that's out. So you just start thinking, like, maybe there's a way I can print something out. You, just, you know, you're going all haywire. And they don't give a fuck. They don't care. It's Saturday. You can go, hey, listen, I'm, I'm white. I'm cool. I have no record other than the turnstile yeah, jumping. Yeah, I'm yeah. cool. Here's my number. Here's my photo. Here's my Twitter. Here's my stories. They don't give a shit. But it's amazing. That little booklet. It's just this dumb pamphlet piece of garbage. Jizz face motherfucker. You Ah, so now to try to guess what I did. I'm going to guess you had to get on an early flight, fly to New York, get your shit, and fly to Toronto from there. Wow, that's pretty good. You nailed it. <laughs> that was my only option. That's the only option. What else are you going to do? So I lost all the profit because the flight changes. You lose the other flight. That was 300 bucks. Then you got to uh, buy a new flight the day of or the day next day. That's 8 million clams. And then you you know, you got to get the Uber to the house, then the Uber back, and the whole thing. And uh, finally, I was supposed to get Toronto at 1, got to Toronto at, you know, 6.50, the show's at 7.30, barely make it, you don't shower, you hate yourself, you're gay, the whole thing's ruined. But we did it, three shows, killer, Toronto, a lot of Tuesdays. Yeah, I can't wait to go in May, it's my most requested city, yes. so you better show up, May 29th, I think it is. They love us over there. A lot of gifts, you know, uh, Chipotle, weed, anal, you name it. And just good, good crowds. Dark. It's called the Dark Comedy Fest. So they're up for uh, all kinds of all kinds of shit. And, uh, yeah, finally got back today, but I went, I boozed it up. That's why I'm, I'm a shell of a man here. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I'm back. What a weekend. That's why that passport thing, that's why I use reminders so much. Every 10 minutes, I'm like, remind me of, uh, oh. you know, my cut my pubes, remind me of to Wait, fuck my that? mother. You can do that? Yeah, yeah, Siri. Say, hey, remind me to come on Mark's back in an hour. Yes, remind me to let oh, him. Siri is not, not available, airplane mode. Ah. But I do it all the time. And I'm, I got Post-its everywhere. All ah. kinds of Post-its. Everywhere you, you come to my house, it's just Post-its all over the place. I didn't know you were a Post-it guy. Huge Post-it. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. A lot of reminders because I'm going to like Palm Springs. I'm going to Indian Wells for the tennis tournament, and I got physical tickets because I like to oh. get a physical ticket to you know scrapbook the whole thing. Yeah, you don't want to leave that behind. And I got 
It's in my calendar as a date. I got four reminders. I got to post it already. You got to really right. do Good that for shit. You. They say that's how you know you're smart. Because oh, really? dumb people go, I got it. Right. But a smart guy knows he's dumb. Exactly. Uh-huh. And I hate myself. I try to do a bit about this. It's all exclamation points as though the post, it's like, hey. Right, right. <laughs> I'll leave my luggage in front of the door. I'm like, this is just in case I forget to bring luggage on a three-week trip. Yeah. But that's how they, that damn passport, because everything is on your phone now, except the pass. It's so old school. Mm-hmm. It's well, silly. Back in the day, pre-9-11 horseshoe, you could just walk right across. Like in my day, really? we drove to Montreal. You could just cruise right across there. But you had to stop and talk to You had to, to stop. You needed a passport. That was like 04, really? I think. Yeah. Is that right? That's right. What? It was, uh, it was Bush, Bush era bullshit. Tuesdays with facts, we'll slap it up there. Slap it up. I don't know how it all worked because I was 21, but I remember people being like, oh, the Bush and the fucking oh, the terrorist. Drove right over that imaginary You drove line. up. You said, hey, I'm Joe. Here's my license, and ah. I'm going to go you know, rape a stripper. And they said, great. Have fun. Bonjour. That's a fun weekend. Oh, yeah. They liked it. Hey, hey, folks, got to tell you about feels, CBD. Do you experience stress, anxiety, or chronic pain? How about trouble sleeping? Woo, Lord knows I do. I think a lot of us do. Personally, I'm sick of taking sleeping pills and heroin and all this stuff. I think you got to get on this CBD. What is feels? Well, it's a premium CBD delivered directly to your doorstep. It's naturally... Made to help reduce stress, anxiety, pain, sleeplessness. I use it every night. I pop a few drops in and just conk out. It just relieves you of all that mental nonsense. And boy, can my brain cook up some dog shit. So uh, get on it. It's easy to take. Just a dropper. You feel better within minutes. If you're new to CBD, they offer a free CBD hotline and text message support to help guide you with your personal experience. That's nice, but come on. Take a shot. Live your life. Goif. It works naturally to help you feel better. There's no high. Thank God. When I'm high, the anxiety is even worse. No hangover, no addiction. Feels as me feeling my best every day, and it can help you too. Become a member today. Go to feels.com slash Tuesdays, and you'll get 50% off your first order with free shipping. woo Damn. Half off and a shipping. What about handling? What the hell is handling? Uh, that's F-E-A-L-S dot com slash Tuesdays to become a member and get half off automatically on your first order with free shipping. Feels dot com slash Tuesdays. So now it's back to you there, Fatty. Well, I had some travel issues, too. And I, I know the people, some like and some hate the travel. So sure. you're getting travel. Oh, by the way, Gary Veter album is available oh, right now. Veter Las Vegas. Right now, you a half hour left in this episode. When you're done, go stream, download, upload, buy if you want to really support. Yes, get the album. Comedy Seller Records. This is like a 12, 13 years in the making. I mean, the guy's never put anything out. So this is all cream of the crop, grade A, yuck em ups. Yeah, great guy. He's men- oft mentioned here. Yes. Usually it's a short joke, but uh, or a Jew joke. Ah, but um, go get the album. It's it's right now, and of course we got a, we got a lot of plugging. Sam Marill's YouTube oh, special yeah, is up yeah. right now. That's killing it. That's amazing. You've probably already seen that based on the numbers. Yeah, saw it live. Lights out. I just ripped something off my face. Am I bleeding? Ah, uh, no, no. Oh God, I got a, a discoloration. Scab. Is there a discoloration? A little bit. Yeah, it's a little white. It's always there. I've been picking at it for years. Oh okay. God, what is that? You don't want to pick. How about this? I was in the steam room today. And we're talking to a big Latino, Bull, and uh, he's like, hey, my name's David, what's your name? And uh, he's fist bumping, we're talking about healthy, he's like, the sun is healthy, the steam room's healthy, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, my friend, lung cancer, steam room, he said he healed it, healed it. Huh? And I'm like, steam room healed lung cancer. He's like, yes, man, swear to God. Mm. And I'm like, all right, I, I think... think- I think I got to question your police work yeah. there, uh, Dave. This guy's going to die and not know why. I know. I'm like, so if you got a lung cancer, get yourself a tea kettle. You're all set. There you go. A little steam in the lungs. The sauna cures uh, AIDS. You got That's that right. Read. And it gives AIDS from what I've seen in the uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. back rooms. Wear the slippers. <laughs> um, oh, so listen to this travel fucking nonsense. Yeah, hit me. So I'm all paranoid. I, got, I, I was texting with you, so you know, but I'll tell the fine folks at home here. I did the Omaha Funny Bone, fun weekend, nice weekend, went to the zoo. You know they're one of the best zoos in the world? Killer zoo. I, I went did. myself. They had uh, uh, Mennonites. What the hell is a Mennonite? It's like an Amish ripoff. Oh, really? Yeah, you've seen them. 
They got the bonnet. Yeah, they got the bonnet. I don't think they use electricity. Mm. Call in if you know. Mennonite or Persononite. I don't know what it is, but they're out there. Is meningitis related to that? Is that their Mm, thing? No, I don't think so. Mm. By (laughs) Menon. Costanza. (laughs) Um... Well, anyways, I'm out in Omaha, did the funny bone, went to the zoo. Fine zoo. I mean, Great it's zoo. beautiful. It's got some orangutans popping around. Sure. And, uh, the monkeys are really all you need at a zoo. I agree. Everything else, because they look like us. They're swinging. They're cute. They make faces. Yeah, they do shit. You know, that lion is, is uh, on heroin. He's just laying there like an Oxycontin victim, you know, but the, the monkeys are popping around. The lion sucks. lion stinks. King they don't my do anything. Ass. Yeah. You want to throw a... a, a, a can at him just to wake him up. Yeah, he blows the tigers or whatever. They're majestic, but the tiger lion, you got to watch Planet Earth. Yes. David Attenborough, he'll fucking show you a tiger. Now you're talking. They'll, they'll pick up a crocodile and crack its neck. Yeah, but live, the orangutan, uh. he's swinging around and the monkey's jumping up and down. And then there was something called the white fisted. I've had that. Fa- I don't know what the hell it was, but it was some some kind of crazy thing. But there's something. The rest of it, and then it's like snakes. I'm like, get out of here with snakes. the snakes. I hate the reptilitarium or whatever the fuck that is. Boo, bummer fest. I'm going to ruffle some scales here, but anyone Please. that's into snakes, no. I, I don't trust them. I don't want to be around them. That's a red fag. I appreciate you. Thanks for listening. Sure. Uh, you know, come to the shows, but snakes? Nah, you're you're out. These guys with the snakes at their house, they, they feed them the mouse, and they think that's entertainment. Get a life. P.U. I prefer a mouse. I'll take a mouse. A <laughs> mouse in the house is fun. Yeah, sure. You put them on that sticky tray, makes them easy to torture. You take a uh, shit on it, make I, them eat it. When they go, eek. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, you hold their tail and kind of stick them under the water, drown them a little bit. Sure, yeah. Kid stuff. You could throw them, too. You could sw- swim the, uh, spin the tail there. Fuck yeah. Spin the tail on the mousey. Ah. Uh-huh. But anywho, we went to there. That was a great time. But So I'm all paranoid about the travel because... The cruise leaves. Oh, we got to right. leave. The cruise is Monday. Yep. At noon in Miami, and if you miss the ship, you miss the ship. Miss That's the all ship. there is to it. That's all she wrote. Now Sarah's going on the cruise too, but she's in New York. I'm in Omaha. Then I have a web series to shoot. My friend's doing a web series. I'm in the thing. Uh-huh. I'm in, I got a part. Now I've always wanted to be an actor. I just didn't know how to do it, and it feels pretentious. I but didn't know that? Yeah, I love. I love it. What are you kidding? What? I'm obsessed with the movies. You're a thespian. I'm in SAG. I was in the Captain Morgan commercial. I was All in right. the uh, the other one, the Texas football sure, commercial. Sure. Two girls, one. They're out there. Uh, I got two out of my first three commercial auditions. That's unheard of. Boom, boom. Everybody hated me. Yeah. All the actors were like, "What? Fuck you! You fucking loser!" <laughs> hey, like, you got Sorry. in. You got in. Yeah, I, I got to look. But anyways, you know, I wanted to be Jack Nicholson when I was a kid. I'd always be crying and sure, McMurphy. Ah, oh, the best. Oh yeah. Anyways, so I want to be an actor. I got a I got a role in a web series, and I'm reading lines. Sarah and I read the lines. I recorded them, so I'm listening to them in the thing, and I'm like, I I had the dinner with the the girl that's making the movie. We went over our characters what? and my motivations. This is big. I'm really into it. I'm yeah. all fired up. But it shoots Sunday. She asked me to do it, and I'm like, well, my flight lands. At 2 o'clock, so we could do 5.30, and it's Oscar night. Oh. And I love the, I used to tape the Oscars on V, I have all the Oscars from 96 to like 2011 on VHS. What? Not 2011, how, however long VCRs went. Sure, sure. I got Roberto Benigni jumping around oh, yeah. and Nicholson winning for as good as it gets, the that whole thing. thing. Um, I got them all lined up. I love the whole thing. I didn't know that. Love Oscar night, big thing. I had a big part. Anyway, it's a whole thing. I'm a, I'm a little... Gay, quite frankly. Well, I wonder how many Harvey Weinstein uh, high fives are on, on those footages. Oh, I bet he's sprinkled throughout there. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're a god to me, and they they blow him, and they kiss him, and they talk about how great he is. Sure. Not a not a good person. But any, yeah, any that's jizz. That's what I've heard. So I got an acting gig right before Oscar night. I'm like, I'll be there at 530. My flight gets in, I think, at 2, something like that. So, But I'm paranoid, because I'm like, I'm going to miss one of these. Right. Well, if you're going to miss one, I'd miss the series. You want to miss the acting thing. So, yeah. Ronald Reagan, the actor. So, I get the, uh, I'm freaking out about this skin tag. It's, it's a bump. You can't even see it. It's bumped, though. It's a, it looks like a scab. It's a scab. It's been there for years. Oh, well, you, gotta, you can't keep rubbing it. Oh, boy. Well, I'll figure you it out. You know what? Later. It might be a, a mole. Maybe it's a mole? Yeah, it might be a mole. Don't wanna, you don't want to rub that mole off. Is that bad? Yeah. you got to let the mole be. Mole be. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ted Mulvey He was in uh, How I Met Your Mother Alright so 
I'm, I go to the airport, of course, and I get. I like to get there early. So I had the guy pick me up, and uh, by the way, my cab driver, now I'm just doing bits. The cab driver, we're talking politics. I know you guys don't want to hear about politics, but he goes, I can't, I, we talked about Mayor Pete. He's like, I can't imagine voting for a gay guy. Ah, wow. And I'm like, well, just say you don't want to vote for him. Right. Let's say you can't imagine it. Uh-huh. You can imagine anything. Yeah, that I can is imagine true. fucking Mayor Pete in the ass while Bloomberg comes in my face. Sure, I did it today. Yeah, you, I mean, everyone's doing it right now. Everyone imagine it. You got it. I, I never. I'm with you. I never got one. Billy, you can't make that up. No, you could. You could make up Star Wars, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings. It's all made up. Yeah, you make anything up. Yeah. What the hell are you talking about? Just imagine vote. I mean, this is the voting is just that. You just flip yeah. your little right, fucking right. thing. Just imagine it. Just say I hate gay people. I'm not voting for that. There guy. you go. That I get. By the way, you don't have to say that. You could be like he's 37. He's the mayor of a town the size of my dick. I don't like the guy. Right. But Wait, any jizz. Is he a, t- a mayor? He's the mayor of French Lick or of some horse shit. town? Oh, yeah. Of, uh, I don't know, South uh, Bend. Fire Island? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, like him. He's cute. I like him, too. Somebody did a joke last night. We did the uh, This Week at the Cellar. Somebody, uh, what the hell's the guy's name? He's new over there. He's Yang funny. Bernie. Trump? No, no, a comic. Oh, 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 oh. He did a joke where he said, Pete Buttigieg looks like the kind of guy... That when he raises his hand in class, he says question before ah, he asks the question. That's not bad. That was funny. I like it. Anyways, I did the imagine the thing bit. Ah, I did okay. I like it. Anyway, I get to the airport. The guy tells me uh, he hates gays or whatever. Sure. Drops me off. I get to the airport. Now I'm like two hours early for my flight because I get paranoid. So I'm early, and it's one of these classic 10-15 flight. Been delayed till 11.15. Ah, go, ah shit. Okay, we well, I'm delayed. I text uh, the, the chick. Oh, I might be late, whatever. Sure. Don't worry about it. plenty of time. Even if you get here at 7, does one of those. I'm like, oh, well, 7. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Then it's uh, 11.45, and you go, okay, great. 12.15, 12.45. That half hour delay every 20 minutes. Uh, They're doing that. And when that happens, you're fucked. Increments. Then they start saying the flight is in Minnesota. It's all Minnesota's the problem. Ah, it's got to be de-iced. Ice this, ice that. Yep, yep. Vanilla. And so I keep that. You keep asking, has the flight left? So now I'm calling Delta. Now I'm platinum. So they answer the phone right away. Uh-huh. And I go, I got to get to New York tonight. Or I got to get to Miami tomorrow morning. How can I do that? They're like, yeah. well, you have to fly to Atlanta, but you missed the Atlanta flight. That'll get in at 1 a.m. But I can't go home to get all my luggage and ship. I'm like, well, maybe Sarah could take my luggage, but... It's not going to work. I'm on the phone all day. Yeah. Yada, yada, yada. Five and a half hour delay. Oh, that's a whole web series. I, I've missed the gig. No acting. No chance. Ah. Now I got to worry about getting home for the Oscars. And now I'm also worried if I don't get home tonight, I'm fucked. Yes. I'm in. I'm looking at car. I'm like, could I drive to Minnesota? Could I drive to Dallas? Could I fly to whatever? Sure. If I miss this. I'm out, and Sarah's in New York. She's got the ticket. She's going to make it. Ah, yeah. And sh- now I'm going to be gone. She's going to be off on a cruise, banging the whole fucking gang. Living it up with, at- with Macho Man. I'm going to be in New York with, she'll be Miss Elizabeth. Aha. Uh-huh. So I'll be in New York with no gigs, no acting shit, no nothing. Nothing. So finally, the flight goes, the guy's like, the flight is in the air. So everyone's like, the flight's in the air, the flight's oh, in the air. Hey. It's, it's spreading around, you know, we're all excited. Yes, yes, and, there's a uh, murmur. Get on the flight. I land at like 7.15. I'm livid because I was a five and a half hour delay. I got there two hours early. I'm at the Omaha fucking airport for seven and a half ah, hours. Ah, brutal. I could have watched both Godfathers and that fucking abortion they called the third one. Miscarriage. And uh, all nominated for Best Picture. Ah, that's a mistake. Yeah, the third one sucks so bad. Lost Thanks. a Schindler's List. Anyways. What? I finally. Oh, okay. That's good. I finally get home and I'm just livid. You're, you're inconsolable. Sure. And it's one of those things. It feels stupid. It's all just ego. Because now that you're home, you're home. There's no need to be still be angry. Right. But I get it. But I'm like, I missed the gig. I wanted to act. I spent so much time learning those lines. Ah. And I really was going to nail it. I felt it. I had it. And the lady's disappointed in you. Don't you feel like that? Like You're like, the flight's delayed. They're like, ah, we relied on you. You're like, it's not me. I know. I had to send screenshots. And then ah. this is the worst. You're like, I got my girlfriend's boyfriend to take your spot. And I'm like, I hate that guy. I don't oh, even know who it is, yeah. but it's some pimple that just learned my dumb lines. He stinks. He didn't put the thought into it. Not a fan. Then I get home. How about this twist? I got a check from SAG, the Screen ah. Actors Guild. It's the Oscars. I missed my acting role, but I'm like, hey, SAG, I got a check. Sure. Open it. It's for one penny. Oh, come on. A one cent check, insult to injury. I take a piss on that. I flip it over, come on that side. I stick them together and eat them. Yes, eat it. Eat the penny. 
So Thank I watched your thoughts. <laughs> I watched the Oscars. Fun Oscars. Sarah came home. We had a couple of tweets. Some fun. Chris Rock had some great jokes, by the way. Oh yeah. Oh, he was terrific. I gotta watch that. He goes, I've watched uh, Ford versus Ferrari. I own one of each. That's not even close. <laughs> that was a fun one. A few other fun ones. Julie Dreyfus and Will Ferrell were really funny together. Ooh, that's and then a good combo. Maya Rudolph, Kristen Wiig. They were fun. There were some jokes. It was fun. No host though. A bit odd. Hate the no host. Hate the no host. Somebody had a great tweet. Uh, Parasite won without a host. No, oh, that's, that's funny. Clever. That's pretty clever. clever. Got like 8,000 retweets. So now I'm home safe, and now I'm paranoid about the flight, because now I start finding out with the ship leaves from Miami, but everybody else flew down the night before. I talked to Hamilton, Chris D., Bennington, everybody. They're all like, no, no, I'm staying at the hotel, because they set up a hotel for a Sunday night yes. in Miami, so you could just fucking stroll to the ship. That's what I did. They got busted, shuttle buses. We're the only ones flying there the morning of. <sighs> So now the day before, I'm traumatized. I had a seven and a half hour delay. And then you have the thing that's like, well, I had a delay yesterday. So today there's probably no delay. Right. But that doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make, but I get it. Good odds. It's good odds. So we get there. Flight takes off. Now we end up being early. Because uh-huh. the flight gets in at 10 o'clock. Sure. We take a lift right to the ship. Now we're the first ones there. Yes. And uh, at one point, we're all get through. You kind of pass, surpass, the surpass, whatever. Surpass. Bypass. Bypass. Thank you. Surgery. We bypass the crowd. We get in. Now we're just waiting. All of a sudden, <laughs> fire alarm. Somebody went what? in the wrong exit. Everybody out. They Come fucking on. take everybody out. Exit everybody. A thousand people. So now we're just stuck in the crowd of a thousand people. Oh, boy. We're getting recognized. Some Tuesdays out hey. there. A lot of Legion of Skanks shirt. Taking a few photos. Nice. Now they're like, everybody back in. We're like, we're artists. We're artists. And they just hate us. They're like, shut up, you fucking New York liberal uh. cucks. Gross. Uh, so we couldn't get back in. Then we had to like fight our way through with the badges, like Wayne and Garth. <laughs> you know, <laughs> swing. We get back in. We wait longer, longer. Finally, they're like, "All right, we're ready for the artist. Come on in." Sarah and I, no lie, are the first two on the boat. Hey, I stepped in front of her because I got ego. Yeah, first one on the ship. Did you hit a champagne bottle on that bitch? Nah, no champagne. All right, well you don't drink. But I walked in, and we're the first ones on. It was pretty exciting. Quite a thrill. And everyone's getting there. Have you seen this? Have you seen that? I was like, I was the first one on the boat, you son of a bitch. Yeah. Nobody cares. I'm a piece of shit. I get, my ego's not my amigo. But anyways, we get there, and we're in level five, which is like the DiCaprio horseshit Irish idiots level. There's Wait. 14 oh, levels. Titanic. Decks. Yeah. Paint me. So we go down there. Boy, she was sexy. Oh, yeah. Mm. A lot of the ladies didn't like her getting that role, I remember. When that came out. Oh, really? Like, She's not pretty enough for him. I was like, oh, look who's, uh, you know. Oh, wow. Uh, judging by looks. I'm more attracted to her than I am to him. I don't know. He was good. But, uh, yeah, she had saucy tits, too. Big, supple, white cans. Nice. Nice titties. Beautiful face. She's a good actor, too. Oh, hell of an actor. Good. Rubenesque, if you will. She was, you know, kind of thick. What's Rubenesque? You know, like Voluptu. Hmm. Who's the Ruben in Rubenesque? I think the sandwich. Oh, no uh, kidding. I don't know. Maybe Ruben stuttered. He was fat. Oh, remember him? Yeah. I always confused him and Lavelle Crawford. Oh, yeah, I get that. <laughs> They're kind of similar. <laughs> and earthquakes in there somewhere. <laughs> so we get on the boat. We're in level five, and there's no uh, balcony. It's just a little circle. The porthole. A porthole. And you had said that. You're like, it's a porthole. We bump into J.F. Harris. Uh-oh. Going in, he's like, everyone gets a balcony. All the comics get balcony. So at the last minute, I'm like, balcony, great. Then I get in, it's just a little porthole, yeah. which is what I was expecting. So J.F. Harris fucked ah, my expectations. He fucked you. So speaking of fucking, Sarah and I bang, have a nice bang, rolling the hay. And, Boat uh, bang. We're looking out the little porthole. Then I get a text from Sal Volcano, and he goes, hey, it's a huge mistake. Sorry about the level five. We're working on getting everybody a balcony. So hey, no problem. What but meanwhile, I'm like, yeah, you better, you fucking asshole. Yeah. Kidding, of course. But he gets us the balcony. Now we're all on the balcony, which is a game changer. Because the balcony, you can be outside with the seas looking out and banging. Oh, yeah. Oh, they get with, that ocean air. Without getting attacked by, you know, getting a flying elbow from Savage. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> right, right. So we got a nice balcony, and uh, it's beautiful. The, 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 thing, the whole thing was just amazing. Yeah. But how about this? First night, we're going to the show. I'm the first one there again. I'm like, where is everybody? You're all an the, early bird. I'm an early bird. All the comics start showing up. They're like, God, I got stuck in the hallway from the seizure guy. I'm like, seizure guy? Like, some guy had a seizure, fell down a flight of stairs, what? had a full fucking 
J. Fox seizure. Wow, an Ali. Yeah, he went crazy and had a, a fish out of water seizure. Whoa, and flopping. So, yeah, he was flipping and flopping the whole thing. Might have been day two. I think it was day two. I'll be a little mm. confused. I'll figure it out on the on the on the journey. So he's having a seizure, and like all the comics, are like yeah, I had to reroute, and I'm a little bummed that I didn't see it, which is yeah, weird. Yeah, you want to see a seizure? Well, everything is podcast for me. I agree, Potter. The whole time in Omaha, there's like the back of my head, I'm like, this will be pretty good. Yeah, same with it's the, tr- the passport. Same here. Because there's nothing fun about, I got a flight to Omaha and flew home. No, that stinks. That's no good. You need Potter. So I'm a little bummed about the seizure, but like Hamilton's like, I'm traumatized. Bonnie's crying. Wow. Bennington's, you know, upset or whatever. I always want to be the guy who gets the mouth in. You're like, oh, don't let him bite his tongue. You know, you save his tongue. Oh, yeah. You like put a uh, stick in there. Mean or Streets. Yes. Chris says his mother. I want to be that guy. Um, Bonnie wasn't crying, by the way. Nah. But uh, the rest is true. Um, but anyways, he has a seizure. So then we're doing the show, and I'm on the balcony. And again, this is ego. I'm trying to work on it. We're sitting there, and I'm like, I think we're like, I th- I'm like, Miami's right there. I can I can see Miami, I think. Or I'm like, is Bahamas? How big is the Bahamas? Is it huge? And Sarah's like, I don't think so. I'm like, something's up. I can see a city right here. I'm like, mm. what the fuck city is this? Uh-huh. And she's like, ah, it must be the Bahamas or some island. You're crazy. And I'm like, I guess I'm crazy because I'm like, can't be. We've been sailing for fucking 14 hours. Sure. So we're sitting there, blah, blah, blah. The guy comes on. Boom, boom. Hey, this is the captain. You might have noticed we're heading back to Miami. Ah. We had a health issue. The seizure guy. Ah. We got to go back to Miami. So everyone's grumbling like, what the fuck? And I felt like, okay, it's Miami. Uh I saw these skyscrapers. And my only thing was like, I guess the Bahamas is coming up. Pick it up a notch. Yeah, like Jesus Christ. So we sit there. We idle outside Miami. Like, I don't know, 20 knots, 10 knots. Sure. uh, Knots Berry Farm. Knots Landing. So (laughs) Don Knots. (laughs) So we're sitting 20 Don Knots is off the thing. And the boats, we're just like, what's going on here? We're idling for hours. And they had a boat come to us. Uh-huh. Turns out the guy died. No. Died. Night one. What? <laughs> yeah, this poor seizure guy. Because here's the thing. It's a boat doctor. They don't know what the fuck. Oh, worst doctor on the boat. I mean, it's just a guy in the hold of the ship going, I don't know what's going on. He's at the silver thing, probably. Sure. Wow. Dead man walking. He's dead. So Did they just throw him over? I think they tossed him and his dumb family onto the yeah. boat below. Give him to the sharks. And they sent him back, which I appreciate that they didn't go back and redock. Wow. They just shipped him off and said goodnight like Bin Laden. And then we oh. went back out to sea. I picture putting him on a raft with a couple candles and just letting it go. Go. Just slid them off to, uh, you know, greener pastures, whatever. Jeez, cast away, huh? That's but wild. Poor bastard died on the Impractical Jokers wow. cruise. You talk about an Impractical I Joke. Know. Yeah, that's a good one. A lot of commitment. <laughs> I mean, you'd hope that it would be at least night four, so we went yes. out with the buffet yes. and the whole thing. But this guy, first night, was coming to see Bonnie uh, and Bennington and fucking flipped out. Poor guy, Miss Brewer. So, <laughs> Bonnie, Bennington, and Brewer. Yeah. Damn. But uh, wow, the guy died. Died. Burial at sea. Yep. Poor Viking bastard. Funeral. But Ooh. anyways, uh, I got a few more things about. Well, it, but I'll have to save them for another week because we're at the end of our line. I here. mean, you got you got a minute if you got one quickie. But uh, uh, I got to the well. I got to the beach. That's a whole long thing. Uh, I'll just tell you about Barfkoff guy. Barfkoff guy. <laughs> I've never heard those three words together. Well, we had a guy wake up. I don't know what's going on. If I have corona, God help me. But Sure, Lyme disease. We're laying there the first morning, the next morning, whatever, the first morning that we wake up on the boat, and I just hear, I, I can't even do it. That's ah. not even close to it. Yeah. Fuck, I got to get Michael Winslow in here to do it. Sure. And this, it was like a, I I can't even come close. I know the sound. It's projectile. It sounded like a barf, but also like a cough. Okay. In fact, we even debated. A boff. Yeah, I was like, that's a barf. And Sarah's like, that's a cough. And for a while, we thought it was the toilet or the ship or Mm. something. I was like, that's not human. Yeah. And it was the guy in between. Hamilton, Ryan Hamilton had the room two doors down. This guy was in between us because Hamilton was like, what is that? We're like, I don't know what that is. But it was a big barf cough, which sounds like a Russian. But he's not a comic. No, no, it was some guy. We never got to look at him. Mm. He was like a white whale. Yeah. With, with, you know. Ahab. Something wrong with him. But uh, crazy barf cough the whole time. And it was like eight times a day. I don't know if what? you ever left the room. It was the wildest thing I've ever heard in my life. It was like whooping cough. Whoa. Or whooping. whooping. Whooping? I think it's whooping. Whoop ass? 
<laughs> can of it. I don't know, but that sucks. You can't enjoy the boat. Some yeah. guy's heaving. Yeah, I got no story for it, really, but it was quite a thing. It sounded like Ferris Bueller's keyboard. Oh, uh, br- yeah. Br- br- it does like the, hold on. <laughs> It yeah. was one of those things, but... Uh, well, I got to tell you, those Joker fans, they're all good people, salt of the earth, but uh, not the healthiest bunch in the bag. No, it was about a 60% limp yep. crowd. Everyone was limping, a lot of scooters and rascals, rascals crutches. Yep. Mm-hmm. A, lot, a lot of C-section scars, uh, maybe an eye patch, but, diabetes. Uh, good but, people, though. Great time, and then I got I got more stories. Uh, karaoke was wild, and oh, we had some those photos. Fun. But uh, man, great guys! I love those guys. I mean, Sal, obviously, I know the best, the coolest. Um, he's the best, and Bonnie was hilarious. She had me fucking dying laughing, and uh, her crowd work was great. A couple of drunks, and Bennington's just amazing. It's love like you ben. feel thrilled to be around him. Yes, Keith is like a special guy, and Hamilton's like the best hang. Chris D's one of the funniest people ever. You had a good crew. Amazing crew, and uh, Joy L. Johnson was fun, and uh, who else was there? That was like the main crew we saw. Ah, uh-huh. probably Fenoya. forgetting somebody. Fenoya I saw, but he's like in the Joker's crew. Oh, is he? So we didn't see him too much. Oh, all right. I got some other stuff we'll talk about. But all right, we got to start doing some plugs here. Oh shit! Yeah, where, where are you going to be there, Fatty? Let me uh, just see because I got some big stuff coming up. Well, March first, I'm March second, yeah. Monday, March second, recording my album at the Village Underground Ooh. Comedy Cellar, Village Underground, two shows. Wow! Come on out now. A lot of you have seen me before, so it's going to be a lot of the older stuff. So just. Laugh it up. Laugh it up. Let's make a good album here, folks. Even if you've heard it, I need some laughs. Start some applause. Yes. A lot of like, woo. Not woo, but maybe some whistles or whatever. Yeah, don't, don't pull a macho man. Yeah. Monday, March 2nd, big, hot album recording. This weekend, I'm in Ann Arbor, Michigan, Go Blue, uh, Ann Arbor Comedy Showcase. That's uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Great room. Then uh, recording the album, March 2nd, Hyenas in Plano, Texas, March 5th through the 7th, Mohegan Sun, Comics Roadhouse, March 12th through the 14th, The Belly Room at the Comedy Store, March 16th, and uh, of course, Skank Fest is coming up, Vegas will be at the Comedy Cellar Vegas that first week of April, and I got Worcester, woo-ha-ha, April 17th and 18th, and this is big, the Uncle Dale Fire Department Show, we do it every every year, that's going to be May 9th, we're moving up to a big hotel, it's in Quincy, Mass this year, we're going to have a big Marriott in Quincy, that's May 9th, Royal Oak, Michigan, May 1st and 2nd, and then uh, Wise Guys, Salt Lake City, I'm excited about that one, I'm skipping a huge tour for that so for god's oh, sake it's, a, it's worth it it's a hot room all right and that's may 22nd 23rd toronto may 29th and uh of course moon tower will both be at yes. together we're doing a live podcast here here and skank fest we're doing a live yes. pod and we're there, gonna have there. new shirts that might be available now oh. but not 100 sure yet if i can speak out of school maybe our best shirt yet i love this shirt very Killer. excited lunch <laughs> and a hoodie we got a hoodie and a hoodie and a hook shot uh, I'm at Zany's in Nashville. Love that town. Love that club. Can't wait. Uh, Laughing Skull in Atlanta. Stress Factory in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Come Great on city. Out. Yeah. <laughs> Terrifying city. Comedy Cellar Vegas. Stress Factory, New Brunswick. That's Jersey. Moon Tower. Funny Bone in Des Moines, Iowa. Not bragging. Then we're doing the old Zany's in Chicago. Laugh Shop in Calgary, Alberta. Back up to the Canucks. Tempe Improv. Those tickets are all ready to go on sale. Fila, Philly, Helium, and uh, all kinds of fun stuff after that. You name it. Uh, Soho Theater in London. I'm following your fat steps. Hell yeah. And uh, what else we got? Miami Improv. Uh, that should be rough. Wise Guys after <laughs> you. And uh, Laugh Boston. So plenty of stuff. Get on the Patreon. Suck their dicks. Thanks for all the gays been coming out. We love you. Uh, praise Allah and queef it up. Yeah. Use parts.